You guys ready for this? Everyone ready? That's what I like to hear. <laughs> so this is uh, a, a little talk I've been putting together and uh, been working on this for a little while. So let's start off with a little bit about me. Um, my name is Mike. Uh, I'm also known as Dark Matter. Um, I consider myself a mad scientist hacker uh, who's particularly obsessed with wireless if you couldn't figure that out. Um, I also love reverse engineering. I love uh, doing wire, uh, website pen testing. Um, just everything in this field I absolutely love. Uh, I've created this project. I've also created another project called the hashtag Wi-Fi Kraken. I'll be doing a demo lab, plug my demo lab tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, in uh, Planet Hollywood at the demo lab so come check that out. Um, also I'm a Kismet cultist. Uh, Kismet is the most amazing wireless software for scanning. Uh, also recently I've become a runner so I love running and doing all the running things. All right, let's talk a little bit about the history and background. Um, in the early 2000s, uh, we wanted to get out and uh, figure out what's, uh, what wireless networks we could connect to because we didn't have internet service at our home that was better than like maybe jank DSL, right? And so we wanted to find better service. So we're driving around trying to get it so we could get all of our sweet wares off of our CF serves and, and kazaas and stuff, right? Uh, <laughs> things have changed a little bit now. I'm, uh, how, how, Almost all of us probably have unlimited data plans now on our 4G and et cetera, right? So internet is not that hard to find. So why would you want to start doing wireless stuff? Well, it started for me in 2015. I had this idea that I wanted to monitor uh, all of the Wi Fi's at DEF CON. So a few days before the conference, I took a single board computer and threw some wireless antennas on it put it in my backpack and started hoofing my way around DEF CON thinking yeah this is going to be amazing. Well I learned a lot from that. I didn't catch very much data, I learned a lot. And from that, that led me to the project the, the following year. And that project was Project Lana and what I was able to do is deploy 12 boxes around the conference, sensor nodes, that were able to gather a bit more data um, and they were covering 2.4 and 5 gigahertz wireless. Uh, that project was uh, sponsored to shout out to Warthog who helped me uh, secure the equipment to be able to pull that off. And then that led to, I learned a lot from that project and that led to the creation of the Wi-Fi the Wi-Fi cactus. Uh, the Wi-Fi cactus basically solved a problem that I noticed with the previous year's project. Uh, I only had four radios per box and I was missing a lot of data and I want to catch it all, right? Because you got to get all the data. Um, and so uh, I was talking to Darren Kitchen from Hack5 and I'm like, hey, you know, I had some problems and he's like, I think I can help you with that. So he hooked me up with uh, 25 t pineapple tetras and I was able to pull off the cactus. Okay, but why though? Why, why would you want to do this? Well, the number one thing that I always would typically hear is DEF CON's wireless network is the most dangerous, well network in general is the most dangerous and crazy network in the world. Um, and I wanted to know why. Like why is it that way and how, right? So what did I do? I decided to build a thing. <laughs> Once I built a thing then I could start to understand this and try to figure it out. So another interesting thing is uh, we live in a world where literally everything is interconnected now, right? So you've got like smart fridges, right? And you probably have a smart toilet too, right? So it comes to a situation like maybe you haven't pooped in a few days. Uh, maybe your toilet will then tell your fridge to order you some fiber and next thing you know you got yourself, you're, you're taken care of, right? And of course those devices are wireless, right? Because it wouldn't make sense to connect your toilet to your, to your fridge with a wire. So anyways, I mean we've got, we've got um, devices, tons of devices around us all the time uh, that are broadcasting. You probably have multiple radios on you right now. So I kind of think of them as Pokemon. We've got to catch them all, right? Uh, and then the other thing is hackers, it's important for us to verify trust, right? There's a lot of uh, claims and you know everything's secure, this VPN will keep you, you know, super, you know, I go through seven proxies type stuff and it's like but do you really know that you know you're going to, uh, that your data is not out in the clear. So as hackers it's important for us to do that. All right, let's talk a little bit about the data. Um, this, this is a graph of the data over the years of the, the evolution of this project. And as you can see, it, it kind of grew a little bit. <laughs> kind of got bigger and bigger. Um, 
The interesting thing is like the DEF CON 1 on 2018, 2019 kind of got a little small and the only reason for that is because I ran into a new problem is I kept running out of storage space and so that would limit the amount of time I could capture. Uh, which was an entirely new problem that I hadn't ha ever experienced before. Um, but basically like you can just see that year over year I've been iterating and creating uh, an environment where I'm getting more and more data, creating hardware, making changes for <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> so that's how this is gonna work? Okay, good to know. Um, I love you guys. Basically we would, you're, we're, I'm creating a situation where I'm just collecting more and more data and figuring out the bottlenecks and figuring out how to do it. So when you have that much data, um, how do you do an analy analysis on it? Um, it gets kind of rough, right? Uh, I don't know how many have opened up uh, a two gig p uh, two gig file size pcap in Wireshark before. Anybody? A couple of you. What, what does that feel like? It's painful, right? It hurts. Like you're just like, I want it to query faster, and it just doesn't. And it, I mean, it's it's pcaps are complicated. They cover a lot of data. So um, yeah, and then uh, I used another tool called Network Miner. Network Miner, uh, the the creator of that offered uh, supported me with a license because he thought my research was kind of cool, um, and uh, that's great for data spot checking, right? But if you're going to thoroughly look across your entire data set, that's maybe not the best solution. Uh, another tools that I use is I use Kismet as I talked about. Uh, Kismet has a wonderful web UI that allows you to search in real time, so that's great for like if I'm trying to figure out what the threats are in the environment, what's going on right now in real time, I can pull that up. Also, it, you can now load your previous capture files into uh, a, a running session and then from there you'll be able to then replay all that fun you just had. Um, and then the other cool thing about Kismet is it's stored in SQLite database. So you can just immediately open it up in your favorite SQLite data browser or even your Python, write some Python scripts and start sh scraping out some really interesting data without getting into, you know, processing PCAPs. So, and then I came to a point where I'm like, all I want to do is I want to run a thousand instances of T Shark at the same time. And I couldn't find anything that exists, so I built a tool. Uh, shout out to El Cantaro for making this sick logo for me. Thank you, sir. Um, so, PCAPinator, basically, it's a tool that runs a ton of T Sharks at the same time. So here's the uh, the help file for it, um, and it gives you some of the base information. Uh, right now, what it supports is it will pull like DNS out, it'll carve it out, it'll carve out uh, wireless information, like all of the MAC addresses involved in commu wireless communication, the frame types, SSIDs, fun stuff like that. It'll also grab handshakes, and it will push, push, it will convert them all the way to HCX files, so you can dump them right into Hashcat if you're down with cracking passwords for some reason. I don't know why that would be useful. Um, and then also the GitHub link is right there on there and I'll also have it at the end of my slide. Uh, that is live right now so I just opened it up a little while ago. So you can go get on that. Uh, don't judge me harshly, it's still r really rough around the edges. It's the uh, first like major release of code into the wild so uh, yeah we'll see how this goes. Yellow. So this is just a quick example of PCAP destroying my uh, 96 core, uh, 48 core, uh, 48 logical or uh, 96 logical core server. Um, yeah, so it's it's pretty effective, I'd say. All right, let's do a quick demo video. Okay, so in this demo video, oops, use. So yeah, I would have had a demo file. Uh, so in this demo video, basically what we've got is we've got a 2.5 gig PCAP file, and on the top we have just a single T Shark instance running, and on the bottom I'm running PCAPinator. And so uh, they're running the exact same query. Basically, I'm just pulling out uh, MAC address and a, a bunch of wireless information. Uh, and what this is doing is it's actually taking the PCAP and it's uh, splitting it into a bunch of uh, individual PCAP files, and then it processes each of those smaller PCAP files. Uh, on um, uh, on uh, uh, at the same time, and so uh, that that file took five minutes and forty nine seconds to process, whereas traditional T Shark took nineteen minutes. So that's significant, and also there's still room for improvement. I always leave like you know things in my code so that I can always make it better and faster later because you don't want to you don't want to do your best work on the first shot, right? <laughs> Okie dokie. All right, so what did y'all do last summer, huh? Let's get into this, shall we? 
First off, let's let's get to know you a little bit, shall we? So, uh, people bring their devices to DEF CON, you know, as you do, and those devices are happy enough to probe out, you know, things and look for networks that you, they want to connect to. And there's this wonderful website called wiggle.net that you can then cross reference those SSIDs to. And from there you can create a map of where you're from! <laughs> And <laughs> so the other interesting thing is on here, ooh, cool, 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> uh, the other cool thing about this is uh, you've got uh, a, a, a lot of WPA2. So I'm really happy you guys are using it, your home networks and at your work. It looks like most of you are using WPA2. However, Russia, I, there's a lot of unknown up there. And I don't know what you're doing, but I want in on that action. I want to get some more unknowns on Wiggle. So if you know that secret, let me know. <laughs> All right, let's dive in a little bit now too. Take this from a little bit different of an angle. Uh, this is uh, showing population throughout the world, where you're coming from, and so the larger the, it's a heat map. So it, you know, the larger the dot, the, the higher the place that you're coming from. So this was pretty interesting to me too. I don't know what's going on over there. I believe that. Uh, uh, oh, I just forgot. Baton Rouge, I believe, is what that is. So I don't know what they're doing over there, but there's either a lot of people there, or a lot of devices, or something's happening there. Pretty interesting. All right, let's look at South America. The one thing on this one that was really interesting to me is over in Chile. Like you see that just nice heat map all the side up that uh, on the side of Chile over there. That was pretty interesting. All right, let's look at uh let's look at uh, Europe now. And for me, the most interesting thing on here was the one in Iran. Whoever's wiggling in Iran in Tabriz Dude, shout out to you. Let's keep it up. Let's wiggle all the things. We need every place wiggled on earth. All right? I need that, I need that to happen for you guys. And now we're looking at Asia. You can kind of see what's going on here. This is, it's, it's crazy. You know, we can kind of see these heat maps and look at where people are from. Okay, another thing that we can do too is because I don't just know the SSIDs you've been beaconing, I can know the MAC address of the devices you're beaconing or probing or connecting to. So your MAC address. And what can you do with that? When you've captured data at multiple conferences, uh, thanks to this tool called Graphistry, uh, I was able to create this wonderful graph and each tiny little dot that you see on the screen there is a MAC address of a device that's been at a conference. And so this is the only filtering that's here is uh, if it has been at two or more conferences. So as you can see there's quite a big flow over from Black Hat 17 to DEF CON 25, which makes sense, you know, there's some pretty good overflow from there, people come over. Um, and then there's other, some other small conferences, uh, Saint Con, a Shmoo Con, Cactus Con, and Def, Co uh, Def Camp, uh, to say a few. Um, and I mean, it's just interesting to see these, these groups. Uh, and then the ones are most interesting are the ones year to year. So we can definitely see that DEF CON has some retention, um, <laughs> for people coming back. I don't know why. Why, why do we keep coming back? It's amazing. That's why. It's amazing. All right, let's talk about wireless attacks. They happen. We have wireless attacks. Strange, right? <laughs> so, a uh, number one thing that I, I see and it's really noisy and it's really loud is deauthentication attacks. And one thing that's kind of helpful is you randomize your Mac. And then when you randomized your Mac address, you did it so it's an unknown OUI, an unknown vendor. So basically what that's telling me is this is somebody doing shady stuff. So I'm going to keep track and try to then figure out where you are and triangulate and try, try to track you, try laterate and try to track you down. Uh, so maybe pro tip for all my red team fellows in the audience, or <laughs> not fellows, excuse me, all you red teamers in the audience. Um, uh, uh, go ahead and use like a Cisco OUI or something and they'll, and someone will look at it and be like, oh my gosh, you've got an AP that's malfunctioning. It's not really de-authenticating, it's an AP. Let's go track down this AP that's mis- that isn't working correctly. Uh, <laughs> so the other types of attacks that I saw was there was a couple of um, uh, what look like cracks attacks. And cracks attack, the key reinstallation attack is, is one, it's really difficult to identify by just passive monitoring. So I am just passively listening. I do not connect. I do not make an active connection with anyone. I'm just sitting in the environment, doesn't even know that I'm here. So, um, 
you need more information than that. But, however, based on the fact that these are unknown vendors, uh, we know that it's something really weird is happening. Um, and so that we could go do more, inf uh, more investigation into what's going on. Um, and of course, it's DEF CON, so we're going to see, you know, pineapples, karma attack, uh, pine AP. Uh, we're going to see man in the middle stuff that's going to happen there. Um, and it, what's even more awesome is when you leave the MAC address is 01 or 001337, uh, you know, because who knows what that is. Um, and uh, there were at least 50 of those. Now on the other side, let's say you want to go freak out somebody that's got a wireless IDS, uh, you might as well just start using that OUI for everything. Uh, another thing too is people really like to mess with SSIDs for some reason. Wait, what, what, what number was that? Okay. Uh, they, they like to mess with S SSIDs for some reason. They throw in more data and just it's, it's crazy. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can look for in this data. Uh, also there's a little bit of wall of sheep action. Um, <laughs> most of this I think is just super trolly people trying to, trying to uh, do some clear text stuff to be funny. I don't think any of this is like legitimately like wall of sheep. Um, but uh, yeah, it's some pretty funny stuff up there. Uh, also there were some data leaks, uh, you know, cause sharing is caring. Uh, this is from a website called met.no. It looks to be some sort of weather related, uh, could be an app, I'm not sure, I couldn't find a lot of information on it. Uh, but it does leak, uh, your latitude and longitude. So if this was something that was given privileged information for that from your phone, um, yeah, yeah, you, you just gave me your, your latitude and longitude, thanks in a git request, uh, completely in the clear. Also the API is, is been upgraded. It's been upgraded to 2.0 as you see at the bottom there. Uh, still is in the clear though. So. Uh, and there's another one too. This one is, uh, accu-weather and this is a ZTE desktop widget, or ex yeah, desktop widget from an Android phone. So, uh, yeah, what's up with these leaks on these APIs? Another one I found was this is uh, an alienware bloatware um, and it, it contacts back to the server with uh, a serial number, windows build, etc. So uh, thanks to, you know, Dell's support website I was able to find out that your warranty's expired so I'm sure they can help you with that. Uh, we also can see DNS, right? Because DNS isn't encrypted or if you are doing encrypted DNS like, you know, more power to you, like awesome but how many orgs are actually doing it? Um, so we know that people at least wanted to go to these websites. I don't know if they did, I don't know what's going on, but they definitely tried. Um, at least looked it up. You know, there's a couple on here, you know, fine aid, you know, who's gonna come fill out their financial aid? I mean, this is a great place to figure out your career and what you want to do, but doing your financial aid at DEF CON, maybe wait till you get home for that one. Uh huh, also, uh, Pornhub. <laughs> Ugh. I know, I know, I just go there for the stats too. Oh, another wonderful thing is, um, yeah, like, uh, Slack uses, uh, uh, sub, uh, subdomains, which is beautiful, right? So now I know all your super secret Slacks. And why haven't I been invited? <laughs> all right, so let's talk about some of the summary real quick here and wrap this up. DEF CON is truly a global community. We're gonna have deauths. Uh, it's a protocol level issue. We've got, I mean, we, we need stuff to happen to get that better. Pineapples are a thing and they are gonna happen. APIs are gonna leak. Uh, <laughs> DNS is DNS. For some reason, I don't know why you guys use Slack. Uh, and also I just want to say, you know, don't believe the hype because that was one of the things that I looked into this, the reason we brought this out is like this is the most dangerous, everything's your owned as soon as you connect. It's like don't believe the hype, like use common sense, like don't just connect to the open Wi-Fi and then log into your bank, right? Um, use the secure, there's a secured for a reason. There's, you know, use cell phone service, uh, uh instead, not 3G, not CDMA, none of that. Make sure it's 4G or 5G, uh, which leads me to my next asterisk. Um, I don't know, I heard there was research being presented on the LTE stuff. Uh, so, <laughs> asterisk? I'll get back to you on that. Uh, some other points I want to just point out on how to countermeasure and protect yourself. Don't auto enable auto connect. Um, I know phones now have the ability to do geofencing, so do that so the, that way you're, you're, you can broadcast. Uh, only connect to the, the geofenced area where you're then there. Also use VPN but verify your VPN actually works uh, the way you think it is so scan your traffic because you don't want to be leaking out of your VPN. 
Um, I just want to say thank you to DEF CON and Hack5 and Kismet, SaintCon, DC801, Network Miner, Graphic Street, these, uh, and so many more. There's so many people even in this audience that have, that have helped me and built me up and made me like able to do this, to be here on this stage. I'm so thankful for that. And I especially want to say thank thank you to every single one of you because you know the the likes on Twitter the you know the fact that you're here like it blows my mind thank you so much I'm super honored uh, to have been able to do this project and to present it to you and and to see your guys rea your reactions I'm very thankful of that and with that I thank you 